Hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Jess with The Crazy Place. Joining me on the channel is my husband Darren and you may catch glimpses of our almost three-year-old son Preston. I know these times are crazy right now with the virus and we're having to stay inside our house and not be out amongst people hoping to slow the spread of the virus. We are fortunate enough to live on a farm that's got a flowing creek as you can see and plenty of places for us to kind of explore, get fresh air, get some vitamin D from the sunshine and just get out while still staying in isolation away from others. Today here in Southeast Missouri, it's a nice like mid 60 day, beautiful day outside. I thought this would be a great time to bring you along and show you some of our beauties that we have here in Southeast Missouri. I'm gonna bring you along today. We're gonna take a hike and I'm gonna show you some of the early indicators that spring is here and warmer temps are right around the corner. So the first one is called blood root. You can probably already start figuring out where the name comes from, but we'll get to that in a second. Blood root is unique in several ways. One of the ways it's unique is it has one leaf. That is all that this plant produces. One leaf, and these can get fairly big. These can get about the size of my palm. This one's a little bit on the smaller side, but as you can see, the leaves get fairly large. And from that one leaf, there will be one stalk. So they kind of work in ones here. One leaf, one stalk. When the bud on that stalk opens up, you will have a big, beautiful white flower. A, an interesting note on this flower is that it opens up during the day when the sun is out and at night it closes up. So if you want to enjoy this beauty, you're going to have to get out in the early morning or during the day when the sun is nice and bright. This is a great example of the one flower and the one leaf that encompasses the flower. So here we have a couple of bloodroot plants. We're gonna go ahead and dig some up and I can show you where they get the name bloodroot from. So if we take off some of this dirt, you will see the plant. So we've got the stalk that had the flower, the one leaf, and if we break up the root, you will notice the bright red orange color that this plant produces. Indians would use bloodroot to dye baskets and clothes and really anything that they wanted to dye paint. This is where they would get their red orange color from. Another interesting part of this plant, the stem also produces the red orange color and if you take the leaf apart we'll see if I can get in close enough to show you the veins will produce the blood red orange color so it may be kind of hard to see but it is producing the the color the red orange color moving right on down the line in our woodland area here you may notice this little like hillside of what looks like just a bunch of leaves coming up. You may notice some white flowers in it. We're fixing to talk about the white trout lily. I'm gonna go ahead and bring you in closer so we can get a better look at this plant and kind of go over some features of it. So the white trout lily, which if you haven't guessed, it's part of the lily family, will grow in clusters in the woods. Getting a better look at this plant, you will notice two leaves. The leaves are kind of molten. They have, they're green, but they have brownish, maroonish colors on them. But the most unique part is the drooping of the flower. So typically when you think of a flower, you think of one that you look down at and it's looking up at you. That's not the case with the trout lily. While the flower droops down, the tepals, which are your most outside flower petals, recurve back up. When you look at it, you've got three that are pointed down and then you've got three that are pointed up. 
So looking opposite of it, the back side, this is what you would actually see when you look down at this cluster of flowers. You've got three that are out and then three that kind of curve back. So an interesting plant, interesting flower, just the way that it grows, not like a typical flower, but a very beautiful one at that. Another beauty you might find as you're walking the trails or walking the woodlands is phlox. There are several different varieties of phlox. There's nothing really too special about them except that they kind of grow in clumps or clusters and they're just really vibrant and pretty. You don't have to be in woodlands to find these. You can find them along roadsides, creeks, these will grow just about anywhere. If there's any plant you may already know about, it may just be the May apples. These plants grow anywhere and everywhere. You can see them along roadsides, ditches, woodlands, fields. They are all over. As you can see, there is a big bed of them right here that I am standing in. They almost to me look like a bunch of umbrellas that have popped up all over the ground. Notes about this plant, besides that they're just large and green and look like umbrellas, all parts of the plant are poisonous. So you do not want to mess too much with the May apples. They can grow in two different ways. As you can see here, I just have a single stalk with the leaves. Difference in this one, there is the one off the one stalk, there is two leaves. For a May apple to produce fruit, it has to have two leaves. This one will not produce fruit. As you can see in this plant, the fruit has already started to produce. So, two leaves, and there is the fruit. While the fruit is edible, it is only when it is ripe and not the seeds, just the pulp of the fruit. But to be on the safe side, leave that to the experts and just enjoy the view of this plant out in the woods. Here we have my all time favorite wildfire we have here in Missouri. I think it's so unique, the anatomy of this plant, this flower. While these are not in bloom yet, I did open up a bud on one just to kind of show you. But these here, you will notice they are, they occur in clumps and they have whorls of three leaves. So one, two, three. They're kind of mottled molten, the, the leaves on them. They are called Trillium, the common name Wake Robin. These are also in the lily family. And the unique part about this plant is everything is in threes. You have the three leaves, the three sepals, and the three maroon petals. In my opinion, gorgeous, gorgeous wildflower we have here in Missouri. You can find these in woodlands. You won't really find them in fields. Another indicator of great, rich soil. You all, whoa, no. If there's one thing I do not like, it is snakes. Love nature, love being outdoors. I do not like snakes. It was only a gutter snake, which is non-venomous, but a snake's a snake. Okay, the reason I stopped here <laughs> was to show you there is a trillium in bloom. I just showed you another patch of them. I'm in a different part of the woods on a different trail here. And I just happened to see this. It was the maroon, the red that caught my eye. So here we have a trillium that is in bloom. I'm gonna go catch my breath and then we'll, we'll go to some other plants. Here we are along a drive-through pass that we have through the, through the woods. And we have a plant here that is known as chickweed. This can be found just about anywhere, honestly, but chickweed can actually be used to make a salve. 
to help with skin irritations. This plant, believe it or not, can also be eaten as salads. So while we're in quarantine here, if you're really craving a salad, but you don't want to go to the store and get lettuce or anything, take a walk, gather some chickweed, wash it really well, and you can enjoy that as a little feast or meal. So we've got kind of the cluster of flowers up here at top, and then the reddish stem, and then you've got leaves that occur opposite every now and then. So there you have it, chickweed. So here we are along the creek bank, and I have found one of my favorite plants because it's so fun to aggravate people with. So this is bed straw. Um, as you can tell by the name, um, settlers used to use this plant dried as straw to fill their bedding with. They would also use certain species of this plant to put in milk and it would help curdle and turn into cheese. The seeds of this plant, when roasted and ground up, would be used for coffee. Kind of the interesting, more scientific parts of the plant. Um, that's not the reason that I think this plant is fun. The reason this plant is fun is because you can aggravate people with it because it sticks. It has got tiny, tiny hairs. And if you find this, you can throw it at people and it sticks to them. So, a nice, fun, aggravating plant if you're out walking the trails with somebody. The leaves on the bed straw occur in whirls. So you've got one whirl of leaves, a little bit of the stem, another whirl of leaves, and it keeps going on. The tiny hairs that occur on this plant, so along the stalk and the leaves, there's tiny, tiny hairs, tiny, tiny prickles, and that is what causes it to stick to clothing and people. Pretty fun plant. You can find just about anywhere. Here we have the violet. This plant occurs just about anywhere and everywhere. The one thing about this plant, if you decide that you want it in your flower bed, know that it is aggressive and can easily take over your flower bed. So it's almost best just to kind of enjoy the violets in their natural form out in the woods and the fields. And violets in Missouri can occur in several different colors, different shades of purple. They can also occur in a white form. And I'll show you one of those here as we go along. You're driving down the road, you see a field that almost looks purple. That, my friends, could be one or two or even both of the next two plants. They are in the same family. They are actually in the mint family. One is known as dead nettle. The other one is known as henbit. So dead nettle and henbit are pretty similar. Um, the flowers, very similar. They're tubular, um, but the leaves occur differently. So I'm going to bring these up close and kind of go over some different features, facts of them. And now you'll know what that purple tint is all over in fields and yards. Here are these two very similar plants, both in the same family. They have very similar flowers, as you can tell. Um, the difference is in the leaves. So this here, this is what we call the dead nettle. The leaves they describe as almost like tongues. And they kind of start at the top, work their way down, and then you've got a pretty empty stalk. The henbit, on the other hand, has whorls of leaves. So you've got a whorl of leaves up here, a little bit of stem, another whorl of leaves and flowers, stem, another whorl of leaves. Besides the flower, and we'll see if I can get this close enough, the stem, of both of these are square. So you can kind of see it there, but also if you just roll the plant, the stalk of the plant between your fingers, you can feel the edges as the, the edges that this plant has. So both of these do this. Both of these have the square stems. And besides the flowers, that is the other thing that these have in common. So now you know this plant that 
is in yards, fields, roadsides, pretty much everywhere. Now you know what they are. And in case you're super hungry and you're still working on that salad from earlier, these can be gathered, washed, and used in salads as well. Very good for iron if you're low in iron. Here we have two types of Missouri violets together, the deep dark purple and the white one I spoke of earlier. As I said, fairly common. You can find them just about anywhere and they spread rapidly. Well, looky here. Nice fresh deer tracks. Here we have our next plant. This is actually a tree and it is known as the red bud. A beautiful tree in the springtime because of its red pinkish red flowers it has on it, the buds. Interesting note about that, you can actually collect the buds and process them into a jelly. I did that last year and if I had to describe the taste of the jelly I would say it is kind of berry-like, nothing too potent or floral in my opinion, but it was different, it was unique. Another identifying feature of this tree is the way that the branches zigzag. So if you're in the middle of winter, no leaves, no buds, no flowers, you can identify this plant, this tree, by the way the branches zigzag. Doesn't get very large or anything, a nice ornamental tree to have in your yard. And the leaves, once they arrive, which isn't too far off if you look at the buds here. The leaves will be in a heart shape. One of my favorite little trees to have. So we have a couple different plants here I'm going to talk about. The first one is going to be mullein. It's hard to miss this plant. The leaves, although it doesn't look very big here, if you get some of the more mature plants or give this a little bit of time, these plants, these leaves get massive. So the leaves get really huge and the flower stalks get really tall. So the leaves are very, very soft on both sides. The extracts from this plant can actually be used to treat respiratory issues. Um, back in the day, Native American settlers, that's what they would use this plant for. The yellow flowers that will occur on the tall stalks of this plant can be infused into an oil to treat ear infections often caused by respiratory issues. So a very valuable plant to have around. Now I know there's no stalk here with the flowers, but you won't miss it because the leaves, like I said, get very massive and they're in a whirl, kind of like they are here, and the stalks can be as tall as me, if not taller. They get pretty massive. So a single stalk with a bunch of yellow flowers that come out from the top. Speaking of yellow flowers, the next one I want to go over is the dandelion. Most everybody considers this a weed, and I guess it could be, but it is a very valuable weed every part of the plant. I collected the flowers last year and made that into a jelly. And if I had to describe that jelly, I would say it's almost like a honey taste. So pretty good. So that's something while we're in quarantine, while we can't go anywhere, keep the kids busy, send them outside, collect dandelions, and I can leave the recipe below. Or you can find it online. Infuse them in hot water, and then you'll do the process of making jelly. So the parts of the dandelion plant that can be utilized. The roots, if you dig up and get the long root of the dandelion plant, that is great for digestion and liver detox. The leaves, if you catch them early, like right now, not so much in the latter part of summer, but right now, you can collect the leaves and use these in salads. They are also very rich in iron, calcium, and vitamins. So a good thing to kind of have around and include in your diet and that salad that we've been working on as we've been taking this trail. Another interesting note, when you take the dandelion and pull it apart, you may notice a milky substance from the stem and the flower. That milky substance can actually be used to ward off warts if you use it diligently, every day, multiple times a day for a couple weeks. So, yes, it's a weed, most people kill it, um, but it's a pretty good one to have around, honestly. 
let's keep going. So the final plant I want to share with you today is called plantain. It's not a showy plant by any means. It doesn't have a big beautiful flower or anything. I mainly like it because of the leaves and the factors that this plant has in regards to helpful benefits. So the plantain occurs on the ground and this can occur in your backyard um, out in the open. So this is pretty, this is a pretty common plant. But the leaves occur in a whirl and the leaves can get very, fairly large but is very beneficial in the fact that it draws toxins out of the body. So I am battling poison ivy currently, believe it or not. Um, poison ivy is not in leaf yet, uh, but the stalks are toxic enough that it does irritate my skin. So I've got a couple spots of poison ivy on my legs already. And if you take the leaves of the plantain and you dry them out, you can make a salve out of them. And that salve you can put on the poison ivy and it helps pull that poison ivy toxin out of your body and help relieve you of the itch and the irritation. So one of my favorite plants because of that factor. I hope you had fun on this little nature hike that we went on. While I would love for you to be able to travel outdoors by yourself, kids make sure you have adult supervision as it is getting warmer out and animals are starting to come out of the woodwork. As you can tell the snake's already out. That's the fifth or sixth one that we've seen in the past week. Not that all snakes are bad. They're, most of them are non-venomous. We do have a couple venomous snakes in Missouri you need to be cautious of. But always make sure you take somebody along with you. But I encourage you to get out, get some vitamin D from the sun, get some fresh air, go outdoors, and hopefully you'll find some of the plants we went over in this video. When it comes to identifying the plants and information about them, I do have a couple sources I keep on hand for referral. The main one I use for flower identification is Missouri Wildflowers. You can find this at the conservation department, order it online. As you can tell, I keep this one pretty tagged whenever I go out, I'll, I'll take pictures, come back, try to identify it. Um, I love learning about the new plants, especially ones that I've never seen before. So this one I use for, just for identification purposes. When it comes to what I could use that plant for, if there is a specific use, I strongly recommend the Medicinal Herbs book. This will not list all of them, but it lists quite a few of them. And inside, it will tell you about the plant, where you can find it, um, its medical uses, the benefits, any safety factors, but it also has recipes. So this one here, they're talking about aloe and it has a recipe for aloe lotion for poison ivy, um, poison oak, and then down here an arthritis gel. So this one's really cool because it has recipes and tinctures and salves that I may have listed in the video with some of those plants. A magazine, a good one with magazine is Healing with Herbs. Um, Darren got this for me a little while back and it is very informative and it's, it's another one that's got recipes and uses inside of it. And the last one, we got this at Barnes & Nobles, a fairly large book, but once again, it'll tell you about the plant and how you can use it and what you can use the plant for. It has recipes in it and how you can use the, the plant to treat ailments or skin irritation. So, some of my favorite books I like to have on hand. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this video of different spring plants that we have here in southeast Missouri. As always, if you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe to the channel. Now that it's getting warmer, springtime, summertime, we are outdoor enthusiasts. We will be out and about doing a whole lot more things, so there will be a lot more videos to come. Until then, happy hiking, my friends.